So in this video, I'm going to explain a little bit why you should uh, be careful when eating moldy food, or why you should not eat moldy food rather, and why you should also be careful about not inhaling the spores of mold. And what spores are, I will of course also explain in this video. So hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here, and welcome to my channel where I like to explore the world with my microscope. And of course, I also like to share my discoveries with you. And specifically, I'd like to talk about fungi today and about those fungi that you're not able to eat, specifically molds, which actually can be a health problem. Well, moldy food is not only not nice uh, to look at, uh, but it can indeed be a problem when you eat it. Uh, mold, after all, is a fungus. We do not want to eat unknown fungi, unknown mushrooms, obviously, because they can be poisonous. And it's the same thing with uh, certain types of mold. Um, molds are able to produce so-called mycotoxins, and those mycotoxins are poisons that are released by the cells of the fungus, and then those mycotoxins are able to spread throughout the food. And then when you eat the food, then those mycotoxins can make you ill. Now, some people like uh, to remove uh, the moldy part of the food, uh, for example, like uh, from this apple here and then they like to eat the rest. I personally don't like doing that because some toxins are able to spread throughout the food um, and are able to reach those places of the food even where there are no fungi growing. Um, so the whole food should actually be thrown away just to make sure because yeah health goes above everything. But uh, under the microscope you see those regular structures and those spores um, are able to spread over the air and that's why we're also able to inhale them. And when they land on a suitable medium, like on the ground or maybe on another fruit, then they're able to germinate. And this means that they're able to grow and they're able to form cells um, which form a dense network of cells. And this dense network of cells is called the mycelium um, of the fungus. And the mycelium can be seen under the microscope quite easily because you see the many thread-like structures, many long cells, and that is actually the main part of the fungus. And some of the, the mycelia, they can be quite large actually. Um, and uh, in many cases, they are not easily visible because it likes to grow in the ground or into the fruit. In some cases, however, the mycelium is visible and then it appears as a fluffy white um, covering um, on the surface um, of uh, some food. Now, there are several ways in which uh, these spores can cause health problems and I'd like uh, to uh, yeah, explain this now. That's the most uh, probably well-known way is, is by inhaling those spores, some people are allergic. It's a little bit like uh, when people inhale the pollen in springtime, plant pollen, then this can also trigger allergic reactions. Those people might have uh, runny eyes and runny nose. Maybe some people might even have a, a problems breathing. Um, in any case, an allergic reaction is an over response of the immune system. So the immune system tries to fight off those spores. Um, it releases histamines. That's a, a substance produced by the immune system. And those histamines actually then trigger trigger those um, things like a runny nose and uh, teary eyes. And that's basically a little bit uncomfortable. Sometimes if the allergic reaction is too strong, it can also be dangerous, especially if you have problems breathing. But it is an over response of the immune system in any case. And the second way in which uh, those spores can uh, cause some problems is, is because some of them carry so-called mycotoxins. As I already mentioned, the mycotoxins are the poisons that the fungus produces. And those mycotoxins, at least some of them, are able to cause an inflammation of the lungs. And this is a condition called pneumonitis, where the lung cells become irritated and this causes the people to cough, um, also maybe breathing problems and a variety of other issues. So in this case, it's not the allergic response that causes the person to become ill, but rather the poisons themselves. And uh, this inflammation can, of course, uh, be of varying degree, but especially if there is a long-term exposure um, to certain mycotoxins, yeah, it can also cause a chronic uh, problem of, of the lungs. Last but not least, uh, um, certain fungi can actually also infect the lungs. And what does this mean? This means that the fungus actually is able to reproduce inside the person's lungs. Now, generally, this does not happen very often in people that are healthy. But people have a weakened immune system, this might very well be the case. It's called aspergillosis, for example, in which case uh, the fungus with the name of aspergillus is able to actually grow inside a person's lungs. And with all associated problems, of course, because then the person might also have problems breathing um, or coughing. Yeah, not, not so nice. 
Now, there are estimates that uh, we inhale per day millions, if not billions, of, uh, of spores. Um, and in most cases, it really is not a problem. Now, why is that? Well, because the lung has a natural ability to protect itself. The windpipe and also the bronchi are coated in a mucus layer, slime layer. And uh, it's pretty thick layer where uh, but dust particles, spores, bacteria, viruses, even human skin cells. Uh, they're quite a large part of our house dust or skin cells and other dust particles. Uh, when we inhale them, they're trapped inside the mucus. And then when there is uh, a lot of this accumulated, we start to cough it up. Like... <coughs> <clears throat> and then we swallow it. Um, yeah, the mucus, we cough it up, we swallow it, and then the, the acid of our stomach digests it, and then everything is neutralized. So you see, this is a natural way in which uh, the human lungs actually clean themselves. Now, it is uh, pretty easy to control food because all you have to do is you have to throw the moldy food away, but it's a little bit more difficult if you have a very persistent fungus growing inside the walls of your apartment. And uh, this happens when the walls are a little bit moist and humid, and then it can be sometimes very difficult to get the fungus away again, uh, especially in moist areas like bathrooms and kitchens and so on, where there's lots of humidity. This is a really ideal place for fungi to grow. But not only that, look, I found uh, actually some fungi grow going on my window uh and I was kind of wondering, why is that? Well, because this is where water started to condense. The temperature changes, and when it's cold outside and the moisture is high inside, then the water droplets start to form on the inside of the window. And this can actually be uh, then a place where fungi starts to grow. So I had to, of course, clean away everything here from the window. Um, but uh, a little bit more difficult is, of course, the wall of the apartment. And I recently found uh, behind my cupboard, I found a large discard. Coloration, um, and this was actually some fungus growing um, on the wall. And the reason is, is because the cupboard was so close uh, to the wall that there was not enough air circulation happening. And therefore, the wall was, um, yeah, kind of retaining the moisture and therefore fungi could um, start to grow without problems. Yeah, so we have to make sure that our building is sufficiently dry. But that's, of course, also a challenge. Now, I have already put fungi under the microscope many times before. And if you're interested in knowing more about them, I do have uh, more videos here. I would also like to invite you to subscribe to this channel if you have not already done so. Yeah, and I wish you all the best. A happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye-bye.